there's so much happening in artificial intelligence that it can be really hard to keep up. And frankly, I think investors don't really need to do that because the world is moving so fast that we don't really know who the winners and losers are going to be quite yet. But there was a really interesting, actually two really interesting announcements this morning. I'm recording this Wednesday, March 12th. And Alphabet announced some major advancements in their artificial intelligence and even robotics tools. One was a extremely capable model, capable model that's going to be run on a single GPU. It's more efficient than even some of DeepSeek's models. And the second was some advancements in robotics. But this may be more generalizable than we have from a bunch of other companies in the space. Both of these areas are moving extremely quickly. And what I keep coming back to is that Alphabet is extremely well positioned in the market. They have the most distribution in a number of different ways, whether you're talking about Google, the website, and the search engine, or even the devices that we have today. So I'm going to go through some of that. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's first go to the announcement of Gemma 3. And this came from Alphabet this morning. Like I said, single most capable model you can run on a single GPU or TPU. They give some of the stats here. Outperforms Llama 405B, DeepSeek V3, and O3 Mini in preliminary human preference evaluations. These are some models some, that are basically trying to benchmark how good is an, is an artificial intelligence, is an AI model, does it meet some kind of specific benchmarks? And you see some of those here, the chatbot arena ELO score has a score that beats DeepSeek V3, a little bit deep behind DeepSeek R1, but look at how many H100 is required to run these. These are actually pretty intensive models. So Gemma 3 is going to be much more efficient. And that means it's going to be able to leverage Alphabet's infrastructure much more than some of these other models. That's really the differentiation for Alphabet is that if they can make their models more efficient, that's going to help them serve more customers through Google Cloud. I'll go through Google's cloud numbers in just a little bit. But this is the kind of advancement that we continue to see with Alphabet. I think I don't think they get a lot of attention for being one of the leaders in artificial intelligence, but they absolutely are today. And they are because they have a vertically integrated model. They're building the models themselves. They're making TPUs themselves. They have the infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure, everything that they've been building to make Google search just microseconds faster over the last 20, 25 years is now manifesting in a better experience in artificial intelligence for both developers and users. Where I think this is ultimately going to be the most important is these really efficient models are going to start to move on device. They're already doing that, but the place that we're going to see that manifest is in Android. Android has more users today than Apple's iOS. That means that they're going to get these models, Gemma or Gemini, into the hands of more and more users, get more of them using Apple's. They're going to be building these use cases. They're going to be building the developer e ecosystem. All of those things are going to be positive for Alphabet in artificial intelligence. That's why I think this is one of the best positioned companies today. And then think about you have the Android ecosystem. That's going to be the on-device ecosystem. And then everything that they can just offload to the cloud. If you have a bigger, more complex question or you need a more complex model, that can just be offloaded to the cloud. That's all vertically integrated for Alphabet. So just phenomenal positioning for them. But the other and potentially long-term more important thing for Alphabet is moving into these big generalized models in robotics. This is an area where they don't really play right now, but it's hard to see them as a company that's not already a leader in the space. This was their release again this morning, Gemini Robotics brings AI into the physical world. Now, if you've been following the robotics space, there's a bunch of companies that are using artificial intelligence to make their robots smarter, be able to do more things. So it's not unusual that this is possible to do this. We know that based on companies like Figure and Tesla has shown some of these things. What's interesting here is that you have more of a platform from Gemini, these models, and then the business that they're building with their cloud, and the fact that Gemini is arguably not all that far behind these companies that are just specializing in just doing robotics. Again, this is the generalization of artificial intelligence. You build a model like Gemini, suddenly it can do everything from language translation to running a robot. So let's go through a few of the things here today. This is from Google DeepMind, and they've been pro making progress in their models to solve complex multimodal reasoning across text, images, and audio and video. But those are now making their way to gen a new generation of helpful robots. The first is Gemini Robotics. And this is built with Gemini 2.0, but this is an advanced vision language action system. So it's taking in vision and language, so you can actually talk to it, and then it's turning that into actions. They've got a couple of videos here. I'll put this link and a link to the other announcement as well in the show notes, so you can go to those if you'd like. But what they're able to do is not only walk around, but actually pick up things. And the person that's operating this is giving instructions in real time, saying, you know what, pick up this banana, put it in a bowl, uh, put this one in the pink bowl. 
So it's just interacting with you on an ongoing basis, just a crazy advance in robotics. Now I think robotics has been much more advanced than a lot of people think for quite a while, but more, most of that is very deterministic or programmed. This is more generalizable. This is the kind of thing that can be outside of a factory floor and actually doing real world things in a much less constrained environment. I think that's what's ultimately really interesting here. And they talk about that a little bit, the generality. Gemini Robotics leverages Gemini's world understanding to generalize to novel situations and solve a wide variety of tasks out, tasks out of the box, including tasks it has never seen before in training. Again, this is something that we've seen from other robotics companies saying, okay, you've never seen these products I'm gonna put in front of you. Pick this one and put it over here and usually the robot is able to do that. They showed this a little bit. Now these are a little bit different. These are a little bit more kind of mechanical looking robots that they're using with Gemini Robotics. But it'll be interesting to see where they take this because I don't see Alphabet being a robotics company, but could they be a model company behind companies who are actually making robots? Is there gonna be a manufacturer or a product company that's gonna design a product and then it's just gonna build on top of these robots? I think that could ultimately be really interesting. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Alphabet, in a lot of ways, much better position, in, I think, in artificial intelligence than a lot of investors give it credit for. And let's put some of the some numbers to this, because I think we often overlook this as investors. The first thing I'm going to show here is just the Google Cloud revenue. A lot of their revenue from artificial intelligence just ends up in Google Cloud. You can see that this is growing at about a 30% compound annual rate. I don't see any reason that this isn't going to continue for the foreseeable future. How long is that? Is that five years, six years down the road, we don't know quite yet, but the models that they're building, the applications that they're building, the distribution that they have, I think this is gonna be a phenomenal growth business. The other thing is their hardware subscriptions and kind of this other bucket that they have, this includes Android. I think this is gonna be another place that Alphabet is gonna be able to grow because you're gonna not only have the software and services, but also the hardware that goes along with it. That doesn't need to be a robot, but it could be a smartphone. And then that smartphone controls a robot that just plugs into it because you have Alphabet as a platform. This is the power of Alphabet's business, is that this is arguably the company that's connected to more people in the world than anybody else. If they're gonna now be moving into the physical world, even if other companies are actually building the physical devices, if they're building the software underneath it and the AI models underneath it, that is a really fascinating position for them to be. And I think TPUs, all the infrastructure, all the cloud products, all the tens of billions of dollars they spent over the last 25 years building out that infrastructure, that's gonna be a huge asset for them going forward. So Alphabet, one of the stocks that I own in artificial intelligence, really it's the only one that has a big exposure to artificial intelligence because it's the only company that I see has a durable competitive advantage. So many other companies are gonna be able to be disrupted by another company like Alphabet. So let me know what you think about their moves in these new smaller models, more efficient models, and into robotics. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.